Hey everybody, it's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome to my channel and to my dining room because my craft room is a disaster right now. <laughs> In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some easy DIY projects that have kind of a cool modern feel. There's only two projects in this video, and uh, I went into some detail, probably a little more extra detail than normal for both of these, but I wanted you to be able to see how cool they both really turn out. And I literally used Matchbox car tracks and uh, scrap wood from like Crafter Square and uh, I'm really, really excited about the way both of them turned out. Now, if you are one of my long-term subscribers, you know I call you guys my OGs. Thank you so much for sticking around. OG just means part of the original gang. And uh, I am so thankful for all of you. If you're brand new to the channel, maybe checking it out for the first time, even maybe YouTube recommended it to you. Thank you, YouTube. Um, I welcome you as well and hope that you will stick around to become a subscriber also. And uh, let's just jump into those projects. <laughs> All right, everyone. And for project number one, I am going to take one of these Hot Wheels tracks. You buy them in a two pack from Dollar Tree, but uh, I'm just going to be using the one. And then also I grabbed this piece of wood that I picked up from Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. It's got this nice routed edge. Um, it will need to be sanded just a little bit because it's a little rough, but it is the perfect size for the project. Also, this is a cardboard lid from one of the round cardboard boxes that you can get at Dollar Tree. And uh, I'm just gonna be using the lid for this and I'll use the base for another project. And then these are optional, some of the Jenga wood block pieces. I actually ended up not using them, but I will show you how you could use them if you wanted to to kind of uh, raise that little cardboard circle there. So the first thing we're going to do is take our Hot Wheels track and we are going to bend it. Now, this has this kind of lip on it on both sides and the track kind of naturally bends one way versus another. So if you try to bend it this way, you'll see how it starts to crinkle there. And that's that's something you don't want. So you can either... Trim that track off if you wanted to, but I liked the way it looked. I liked the kind of effect that it was giving. So just kind of bend it in the natural way that the track will uh, bend. And then uh, you'll see that you bring your center pieces together there and you've got those two holes. Now, what I did, and I did this ahead of time, but then you probably even kind of see it. I'm taking a Sharpie, I'm taking a Sharpie. And I went ahead and just marked my two holes right there where um, I am going to be screwing this track into my wood base. So I am uh, going to go ahead and take these two screws. I've already pre-drilled a little bit of a hole there with my Ryobi cordless drill here. I'm going to take my screw, and you want to make sure that the screws you get are not going to be too long because obviously you don't want them to stick through the bottom of your wood pieces. Now, um, Thank God for these magnetic tips that the Ryobi has. It helps keep that screw in place. Now, this one is kind of the easier one because you can just flex that track out and just screw that down. I do not screw it down all the way until I've got the other side in. And um, yeah, I'm just doing that because I want this to be consistent with the tightening and everything. And I may need to adjust it a little bit left and right. So now that I've got everything kind of adjusted, I've got my holes matched up again. I'm gonna take my drill once again and just make sure that that piece is screwed in to the Hot Wheels track here. Now, the other thing you wanna make sure that when you do this, you wanna make sure that your screw is not so small that it's not going to hold that track down. Hopefully that makes sense because that, if you get a screw obviously that's smaller than that hole, then it's going to pop out. Now, I've got everything screwed down and ready to go. I took my cardboard piece and I just used a screw and literally just kind of poked a hole in the center of it. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm going to screw it down in the center of my board. And uh, I'm doing this um, kind of in that larger hole that you saw when you join the two pieces together. I didn't pre-drill it though, it was fine. It went in pretty easy. This is pretty soft wood. Um, so if you didn't pre-drill your holes, don't worry about it. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal at all. For this one, I just kind of screwed it down until it was uh, tight. 
Now, for the Jenga block pieces, if you wanted to kind of raise the centerpiece here, you could with those Jenga block pieces. I didn't find that it was necessary, and since I'm not going to be using a real candle in this, it's going to be perfectly fine. Now, we took it outside, and I gave it two coats of my matte black spray paint from Rust-Oleum. I buy this paint by the caseload, and uh, it's just one of my favorite ones to use. I think it's really cool for industrial looking pieces and kind of anything kind of modern looking, and um, I really love the effect. So after this was dry, I took it inside, added a battery operated LED candle from Dollar Tree, and I've got this really cool, very modern looking candle holder. I saw something very similar at Pottery Barn and they wanted $80 for it. No thanks. And for my next project, I am taking a bunch of stuff here. Um, I've got one of these brackets from Dollar Tree. I've got some oversized popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree. I've got two of these wood planks from the Crafter Square section. I've got one of these mason jar hangers and I've got a mason jar. And then I've also got a sheet of this wallpaper. Now I think this is from Dollar Tree. Um, you may remember my autism haul um, about a month or so ago, two months ago. And uh, John Paul's mom sent me a nice little care package. And uh, I uh, loved that wallpaper, so I'm going to be using it. Now, your boards, they have two sides. They kind of have a softer side and a rougher side. So for this, you're going to make sure that your two rough sides are, are um, you know, the back side of this. And so the, the side that you see facing you right now on the camera those are the smoother sides. Now, flip your boards around, play with them. They're not going to be a perfect fit. Um, figure out, you know, which one will fit the best. And then I'm going to be taking some woodworking glue from Shorebonder. And I'm just going to add it to the edge of my board here. And then I'm going to join the two pieces together. And um, this has a great great hold. But I am going to go ahead and just reinforce that hold by using some of those oversized popsicle sticks that you saw. Now, I know in the beginning, I only showed you two of them, but you're actually going to want to use about four of them. And the reason why you're going to want to do that is you're going to put two across the center and just kind of um, uh, overlap it just a little bit between the two boards. That way you've got everything nice and smooth. And then for the other parts, you're going to just glue one stick on each end of the board. The sticks are a little bit longer, so you can do them at a diagonal. You can cut them and trim them down if you wanted to. Either way works perfectly fine. The two sticks that I'm doing in the center there, those are for support and for keeping those two boards together. Now, when you add those supports, it adds a little bit of, um, you know, it adds a little bit to the back of this um, thing that should be hanging against the wall. So putting the two sticks on either end is just going to kind of even out the playing field. So hopefully that makes sense because you don't want to hang this against your wall and then have the center pieces kind of bucking it out from the wall. So that's why I'm adding those two sticks on either side of the, of the piece itself. So after everything was dried, it was time to start working on our wallpaper. But before I place the wallpaper down, I do want to go ahead and just sand my board. I'm going to sand the edges. I'm also going to sand the top where some glue might have kind of seeped out between those two boards that I glued down, especially on that front side. And then I did go ahead and just take the sandpaper and just kind of lightly go over the front of the board where my wallpaper is going to be glued down because I want to make sure that that wallpaper stays on that board. Now, the cool thing about this is that I used nothing else except for the wallpaper to stick this on. Now, speaking of the wallpaper, it is long enough to cover one board if you split it in half. And it is overlapping if you use it the long way. Hopefully that's making sense. I'm not sure it's making sense to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wallpaper and I'm actually gonna measure it out like you see here. And uh, I took my paper cutter out and uh, I am going to fight with this thing. And then once it opens, I'm going to fight with it again because it doesn't seem to want to work for me. Um, I am going to cut it right down on that yellow line. I just did that with a colored pencil. It was the first color I grabbed and it happened to work out really good for me. Now, you can see here that you've got a wide enough piece that will cover actually exactly 
the board that you are using. So I need two pieces and I'm just gonna slice directly down the middle using that line that's already given to me as the guide. And this worked out perfect. I was so glad I didn't mess this up because I only had one piece of wallpaper. And uh, now, as you can see, it's the perfect width for each of the boards. So I'm gonna flip them and kind of join the patterns together like so. And uh, it kind of creates a really cool effect. Now on the wallpaper itself, it's actually pretty easy to stick this down. It has this kind of fold and crack seal, at least on the one side it does. And uh, I went ahead and used that side first, of course. I lined up the edges. Um, this doesn't have like an immediate grip. So if you need to reposition it or anything like that, you can totally do that. That's what I was doing here. And for this one, as you can see, I'm kind of, um, you know, really trying to line that up and get it um, the perfect fit because it is exactly the perfect size for the board itself. And, uh, you know, I didn't stick anything down until I was super comfortable with where the placement was. And then once I had that placement, I stuck down that kind of one side of it or that uh, it's not even a quarter, I would say, of the page and then or of the paper. And then after I was pretty confident and pretty happy with everything, I just went ahead and smoothed it down, took my time with that, made sure I didn't have any air bubbles, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just peel off this excess piece here. And getting that corner started was a little difficult. It uh, didn't come up as easily as I thought it was. And then I'm just gonna fold that down and then kind of starting from the top, just kind of start working it down and using my fingers just to kind of smooth it out. And it's perfect. It is the perfect width of that Crafter Square wood board, which is even better. And uh, after I had everything smoothed down, I did go ahead and do the other side. The other side was a little bit more challenging because it didn't have that crack and peel kind of feature. I did kind of fold it and it again just it just didn't work out super, super great. So once I kind of uh, finally figured out where that corner piece was and was able to uh, finally get that separated from the wallpaper, um, again, just kind of fought with it and picked at it and you know the drill. I was able to finally get it off of there. And then as you can see, um, I just started kind of working the reverse way for this one. I did peel that entire piece off. I just kind of lined it up at the points and then just kind of started smoothing my way up the board until everything was completely down flat on my larger board there. I really love the way that this looks. I think it looks like a really cool piece of wood and uh, I'm really, really happy with it. But we are going to do one additional little tweak. So that little tweak that I talked about doing, um, I'm gonna actually paint the edge of my board. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Waverly ink chalk paint. I love working with this. And um, I'm not too worried about getting it on the wallpaper itself because I figured that I can always dry brush it or you know, age it. There's a lot of different ways that you can kind of fix this if I had to. Um, I also think that had I used the chalk paint before, I might have had some issues with the wallpaper sticking properly to the board itself. So I don't think that this was a um, a fail by any means. I don't think that it was a uh, total smart thing to do either, but uh, it, it worked out okay for me in this case. So, um, you know, try it either way if you want to, but I do think that this is the best way to do it. And again, it was just by accident for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do this all around the board. I'm going to do it on all four sides and then kind of treating it like I do antiquing wax. I'm going to wipe away any of the excess because it's going to help give that board that kind of aged weathered look that the wallpaper, you know, sort of has because it is a newer wallpaper, of course, and it's, you know, shiny. And uh, you can see that I've already got some of my chalk paint on there. Now on this end here, this is a little bit um, short. So I am going to go ahead and just kind of uh, dab that on the edge of the board, but then I'm also going to dab it on the end there where it's a little short. And then I'm going to wipe away some of the excess again. And as you will see, it stains the wallpaper. At least it looks like it stained it, but you'll see that it comes off super, super easily. So um, 
Here I am kind of wiping it away and then look, oopsie, got it down there on the corner, but again, not worried about it. It's not looking good right here, but I'm gonna show you what I did at the end here. So I've got everything done and you can see that there's definitely some smudges and different things with the chalk paint. I actually took some hand sanitizer. I put it on my cloth and I went through and I just started wiping the board down and check that out. Not only did it remove the majority of the chalk paint that was on the wallpaper, but it also kind of gave it like this, you know, it kind of helped darken it up a little bit, which I was kind of digging. I really was happy with the way that this was starting to look. And so um, I just kind of left it. I probably could have kept scrubbing with the hand sanitizer and it would have come clean, but I really liked the effect that this was giving it. It already had some of those darker, like grayish, streaks and tones in there but this just kind of helped really um kind of bring it all together with the black edges and everything and uh, again i was super super happy with this one all right now that we've got everything set with the board we're going to go ahead and add our bracket now the screws that come with the bracket they're way too big just put those aside i wanted my bracket to hang with these kind of hooks facing down that way I could kind of have a more scrolled kind of look and uh, I'm just going to take my pliers here I'm going to twist that around until it bends and it's super easy to bend by the way this is pretty soft metal then for my bracket I'm going to just kind of figure out where I want this to be and then I'm going to mark my holes and go ahead and pre-drill some holes now I used this yellow pencil first and uh, that was not smart because guess what you can't see where the holes are. So I grabbed my Sharpie that was a bright kind of aqua and teal color and marked those holes. And then I do go ahead and pre-drill some holes. Now I wanted to make sure that I had the proper size screw because obviously this board is very thin, but then I also have the hole of the bracket that I want to make sure that I have a screw that is going to be large enough to, you know, hold that bracket onto that board. And uh, I did find my little screw pack here. I think I picked this up at Home Depot or Lowe's. And uh, I am just going to now do the little pre-drill. I just pre-drilled with a very fine drill bit. And then I went ahead and drilled in the screws themselves, holding the bracket on. And uh, this is what it looks like when that part is done. Now I'm gonna take my hanger from uh, Dollar Tree and this is the mason jar hanger. And I realized that this is actually going to be too short. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take two of these mason jar hangers and I'm gonna um, kind of join the two pieces of chain together. So um, these chains will be a little, you know, we're, they're a little uh, discombobulated here. And uh, all I'm gonna do is just take a pair of pliers, I'm gonna pull that chain off, and then I'm gonna link it together with the other chain, making a nice long piece of chain for my mason jar handle or hanger, uh, whichever you wanna call it. The other alternative, I guess, if you wanted to, you could really, find a longer, skinnier mason jar, if that's a thing. I don't think that that is a thing though. If it is, let me know in the comments below. I would love to find a mason jar that's just a lot longer than this mason jar, but the same size for that bracket, if that makes sense. So once I've got my two chains joined together, all I did was take my mason jar, screw it on the end, and this is kind of what it looks like. And once it was all done, this is what it looks like. I went outside and I took my friendship plant and I just grabbed a couple clippings off of that. And uh, as you know, these will get roots and then I can share these or plant these with um, a friend or a neighbor. I really love the way that this looks. It's got a cool industrial vibe and uh, I think it could easily sway farmhouse. You could very easily take a macrame plant hanger and put it on the end of this. There's a lot of different options that you can do with this and I'm really, really happy with this one. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed these videos today and these projects. If you did, let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Also, be sure to follow me on all the social media stuff, the titter, the titters, the Twitter, the TikToks, the Pinterest, the YouTube, you know, uh, what else? Instagram, I'm sure, whatever the new platforms are, I'll have a handle there too. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.